A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work of that sort we must help the weak. And keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus who himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power of God with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring you gifts. Sing, sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of, the, of earth. the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God, chant praise to the Lord, who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his voice resounds, the voice of power. Confess the power of God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Over Israel is his majesty. <clears throat> his power is in the skies. Awesome in the sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing, Sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of the of earth. earth. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost, except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world and I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
When in our first reading, Paul talks about savage wolves that will not spare the flock, of course, he's speaking metaphorically, what does he have in mind? He's got in mind two or three different kinds of thing that uh, are going to be happening, and you might say that, um, by extension, Luke, in writing this, also has this in mind as well a little later on in the course of the, the history of the early church in the first century. The first is that it seemed like every single place that Paul ever went preaching the gospel to Gentiles and preaching the, the gospel of justification by faith in Jesus Christ apart from the works of the Mosaic law, sooner or later, inevitably, people would come behind him saying, no, no, Paul had it wrong. You've got to be Jewish first before you can be Christian. You've got to fulfill the Mosaic law before you can be embraced by Jesus Christ. So there's that constant uh, tension that, that Paul has in wherever he seems that he, he goes to preach the, the gospel. So there's that issue that he's looking at. He's also looking at people who will say, you know what, Paul is too hard. Let me show you an easier way. And these people came to be known as antinomians, but in fact they were the ones who said, well, you know what, you're baptized in Christ. It's all good now. You're living the resurrection, so you might as well have a good time doing it. And he had to face that kind of particular problem, especially in Corinth. So there are all kinds of ways in which the gospel can be twisted, and most of the time the twisting is done from the point of view of how will it benefit me, okay? I can make my selective choice of, of passages or interpretations or whatnot so that I am as off the hook as possible. And Paul is warning people, he said, no, it's not the way it's supposed to be. Teach them and to guard them in the truth that they have now. Don't let them go into offside dimensions of, of, of a belief that are really not faithful to Jesus Christ. So what we can do today is ask the Lord to help us to be rigorous with ourselves, not necessarily rigorous with anybody else, okay? And just say, okay, how can I best embrace in my life today, in the circumstances I find myself in, the fullness of the truth of Jesus Christ without going off the deep end one way or another? It's not always the easiest thing to do. It's one of the reasons we have um, guidance in the church teachings, the documents of the church, the, the words of Pope Francis, for example. These are important things for us. So as we hold on to them, may the Lord bless us richly during this day and keep us faithful to him. Let us stand and pray.